The unit circle is really important to know if you're any trigonometry or calculus classes. So in this video, I want to give you just a few tips on how to memorize the unit circle. There's a number of patterns that we can take advantage of. Now, when you're uh, thinking about the unit circle, think about it in two separate parts. Um, think of it in terms of the angle measures. And as a second part, think of the points at those particular angle measures. So we're going to memorize these separately. Let's start with the angle measures. All right, to memorize the angles, remember that the full circle is, you could either say 360 degrees, or you can say it's 2 pi radians. Now, we're going to, uh, more often than not, use the radian notation. So this is 0 radians, and then the full complete circle, one full revolution, is 2 pi radians. So that's measured from the positive x-axis. And then as this angle fans out, you get larger and larger angles until you make one full revolution, which would be 2 pi. Right now, based off of that 2 pi number, we can start chopping the full circle up into smaller pieces. Halfway around would obviously be pi if the full revolution is 2 pi. And then half of that, or half of 180 being 90, you could take half of pi and get pi over 2. So that's this... Um, angle that points up the y-axis. If that's 0.5 pi or half of pi, and this is 1 pi, down here at uh, the bottom of the y-axis you get 1.5 pi, or more oftenly called 3 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 3 halves pi. From there, um, we have to focus our attention on these middle angles. There's three in each of the four quadrants. There's a little pattern to those as well. All right, so the pattern for the other angles, now just the denominators, we'll talk about the numerators in just a minute, but the pattern for the de other denominators, they all have a 6, 4, 3, um, respectively in their denominators. And the pattern goes 6, 4, 3 as you move away from the x-axis. So 6, 4, 3 as you move from the x-axis vertically, and 6, 4, 3 and likewise 643, 643 in the um, lower two quadrants below the x-axis. So you see this pattern here, 643, 643, they're all 6 or 4 or 3. All right, now what's the pattern for the numerators? Well, this varies quadrant to quadrant. Now here's the way I remember this. Uh, first of all, all the radian angles have pi. Let's remember that first of all. Now, so these patterns are going to be everything other than the pi that's written in the numerator. Right, in the first quadrant, all the numerators are 1 pi, 1 pi. So this would be like pi over 6, and then pi over 4, and then pi over 3, combining with what we know about the denominators in the uh, last step. So notice this is just a pi. Um, now in the uh, second quadrant, here's that first quadrant again. Now um, I'm just going to speed through these last three quadrants. In the second quadrant, Notice how the numerator numbers are one less than the denominator. I'm not really going to get into the reason why, but just notice that it's 5 pi over 6, 3 pi over 4, and 2 pi over 3. Just remember that pattern. It's one less than whatever the denominator number is. All right, in the third quadrant, the numerator is one more than the denominator. Um, 7 pi over 6, 5 pi over 4, 4 pi over 3. So just remembering these big generic patterns can help you think about which of the four quadrants is in. Now the last one, is, the fourth quadrant is probably the most unusual one. People have different ways of remembering this pattern. Here's how I remember it, but this is not the only way for the fourth quadrant. I remember that the numerator is twice the denominator minus 1. So it's 5 pi over 3 because uh, 2 times 3 is 6, and 6 minus 1 makes 5. And then 7 is 1 less than 8, and 11 is 1 less than 2. Now for this one, I will give you the reason behind it. See, we have to remember that this is 2 pi as one full revolution. And like 11 pi over 6, for instance, that's pi over 6. That's this angle right here, this, this angle measure subtracted away from 2 pi. So if you have 12 pi over 6, that's 2 pi, then you subtract pi over 6, it leaves you with, well, 11 pi over 6. And in a similar way, you would get 7 pi over 4, that's pi over 4 less than 8 pi over 4, that's 2 pi. 
and 5 pi over 3, which is pi over 3 less than 2 pi. Okay, and that's it. And so here's a completed unit circle. And sure enough, you take a quick look at it, and uh, all these are great. Um, just take a look at all the radian angles, and we have all of them memorized. So we are halfway done with the unit circle. We remember those simple patterns right there. Um, now we turn our attention to the um, actual points at each radian measure. Now for this, let's take a look back at the picture and look at all the possible xy values, not even where they go or anything like that. What What's the xy values that we get? Well, if you scroll back up, you see they're all the same. Uh, they're all just a, in a finite list of numbers. You have, uh, I'm just highlight a few that I see. I see a zero, I see a half, um, I see a root two over two, uh, I see a root three over two, and I see a one, and that's about it. Um, some have different sign, plus or minus, but that's basically it. So it's really just these five numbers. And the X's and the Y's, just because of symmetry, uh, both achieve those numbers. Okay, so the X list and the Y list are those numbers. Now we just have to remember which of these numbers goes with which angle, and there's some nice patterns here. Let's start with the axes. The axes are the easiest. Um, if you're up or down or left or right on the X or Y axis, it's going to be 0, 1 or 1, 0. It'll be one of those on the X axis. Um, just use your common sense for this one. If you're out the X axis, it would have to be 1, 0 to the right and negative 1, 0 to the left. That's just common sense. And 0, 1 versus 0, negative 1 on the Y axis. Those are super easy. Now, 45 degree type angles, when, when I say 45 degree type angles, I'm referring to um, the angles that are either 45 degrees or some mirror image of 45 degrees in either of the four quadrants. If you look at these, um, I'll highlight these in yellow, I think we easily see the pattern here. Uh, they're all the same. They all have root 2 over 2. Now, some of them have a difference of sign but that's simply due to the quadrant that they're in. So the 45 degree type angles always have root two over two and nothing else. No zeros, no ones, no one halves, no root three over twos, period. Okay, um, now my last tip for remembering the point is uh, don't worry about the signs at first, the plus or minus, just try to remember what the numerical values are. And then when, when you're at the end, you're about to write down what that answer is, then consider the sign based off of what quadrant it's in. Um, the first quadrant, if you take a look back at the chart here, notice that every point's x and y values are positive. We know that simply because it's in the first quadrant. In the first quadrant, every point's x and y coordinate are positive. And likewise, in the second, it's negatives, then positives. Third quadrant, negatives and negatives fourth quadrant, positives, then negatives. So there's that same pattern that we can just figure out um, at, at the end after already considering what the numerical values would be. Now probably the trickiest of all is the, the last ones we're going to consider. That's the xy points for the angles between the axes and the ones not the 45 degree type angles. Um, so he here's how I remember these. Um, looking at our list of five numbers of what these could be, uh, let's knock out a few that we've already talked about. We've talked about zero, we've talked about one, we talked about the root two over two, those are the 45 degree angles. So you get these two numbers left over, and it will either be a half comma root three over two, or root three over two comma one half. It has to be one of the two. Now here's how I remember which is which. Uh, a half as a decimal is 0.5, obviously. Um, that's going to be a small number. Uh, specifically in relation to root 3 over 2, if you computed that decimal in the calculator, you would realize that it's bigger than 0.5. So just for namesake, we're going to call a half small. We're going to call root 3 over 2 big. Now, when you think about a particular angle, let's take pi over 3, for instance, pi over 3. When you look at this x-coordinate and y-coordinate, if you kind of thought of this as a box, is this taller than it is wide or wider than it is tall? Is this y value larger than this x, or is the x larger than the y? Obviously, for pi over 3, then the y is large and the x is small. Well, that's what will reveal which order these points will be listed in. 
If the x is small, then the x would be a half, and if the y value is big, it'll be root 3 over 2. Okay, so that's how we think about the order of those two remaining points. Now pi over 6, on the other hand, I'll do this in green, it has a large x and a small y. So the big x, that would be root 3 over 2, and small y will be a half. And uh, again, if you were in the second, third, or fourth quadrant, you would use the same uh, concept, but you would just have to consider the sign, the sign as well at the same time. So um, let me just, uh, I'm going to fill this out for you. I'm going to do this kind of quickly. I'm going to write some and uh, pause the video periodically so I can skip through and write these quickly. Okay, so here's the angles. Um, just real quick run through, we have 0, 2 pi, then we have pi is half of that, and then pi over 2 is half of that, and 3 pi over 2 is 3 quarters of the way around. Um, then we have the patterns of our denominator 6, 4, 3 that we talked about in all four quadrants. The first quadrant numerators are all 1 pi. The second quadrant's numerators are 1 less than the denominator. 5, 4, and uh, 5, 3, and 2 is 1 less than 6, 4, and 3. Uh, third quadrant, all the numerators are one more than the denominator. And the fourth quadrant was the weird one that had the uh, numerator one less than twice the denominator. So 5 pi over 3, 7 pi over 4, 11 pi over 6. Okay, here I've taken care of a few points. First of all, I went ahead and took care of the axes. 1, 0, 0, 1, obviously. Negative 1, 0, and 0, negative 1. Those were easy. Now I also filled out the first quadrant's x, y values, and here's how I did that. Pi over 4, that 45 degree angle, I remember those, the x and the y have to match because it's 45 degrees, it's along that line where y equals x. And uh, so we have root 2 over 2, comma, root 2 over 2, those will match this for all the 45 degree type angles. And then I think in my head for pi over 6 versus pi over 3, and remember the other two remaining numbers are a half, which is the small, and root 3 over 2, which is the big. And for a given uh, angle like pi over 6, I would think in my head, this has a large x value and a small y value. So the point would be root 3 over 2, comma, 1 half, big, comma, small. And then for pi over 3, it would be a half, comma, root 3 over 2, because it's in the other order, small x, but a large y value. Okay, here I filled out the second quadrant values. Notice, um, when you're looking at, well, we'll just take 2 pi over 3, for instance, I, I use the same logic that I did for pi over 3. I see, I ask myself, what's larger, the x or the y value? Obviously, the y value is a large number and the x value is a small number, so it would be 1 half, comma, root 3 over 2, but because it's in the second quadrant, I know the x is going to be negative and the y is going to be positive. So you would have negative 1 half, comma, root 3 over 2, in the same way I've done the other two points. All right, now I've applied the same logic to the third and the fourth quadrants. Um, you'll notice, again, it's the same values that were in the first quadrant, but I've adjusted the signs so that either the x and the y are both negative in the third quadrant, or the x's are positive, but the y's are negative down here in the fourth quadrant. That's how we apply this, this uh, symmetrical logic to the other quadrants here. So really it boils down to memorizing angles and then points, and then just using some patterns that we recognize to tie it all together.